We need a ruler to seal the cord. I use glue, but you can use a flame just to seal the edges. Um, a pencil and then D-rings and screws. So this is what the D-rings look like. So you can get lots of different kinds of D-rings. I have had in the past, I've bought these ones, but they're more for bigger canvases where they've got actually two holes there. But for this sort of size, this sort of size canvas, then these little D-rings are fine. They're just kind of standard, cheap, cheap. What I'll do is I'll put links below the video if you want links to um, suggested supplies. But you can get these D-rings and screws almost anywhere. It's advised to use cord, not wire, um, because wire can be quite difficult to use and um, you can get sort of rough edges on the wire which don't work. So this cord is really great. You can get it in spindles like this or you can buy it in smaller amounts. Um, and again, you can get cord in different thicknesses as well. This is a number two. Um, I've got number four as well, which is a lot thicker, but I find number two is a really nice uh, weight for these canvases. Then you want some uh, framing tape. So framing tape is different to masking tape. If you can, get framing tape rather than masking tape because uh, masking tape has got different chemicals on it and it's got acidic levels in it. There's something in the masking tape which actually kind of deteriorates, deteriorates over time. With preferable framing tape. It's much, much kinder, much, much kinder to your paintings. Framing tape. Then we need a little screwdriver because we're going to need to screw in our screws to the paintings. So a little screwdriver. And then I've got, um, I've got this little, it's called a bradle. It's not essential, but if you've got a bradle, it's just a sort of a finer point. And I'll show you how to do it. But basically it just helps you to define the hole before you put the screw in. Um, so that's just kinder to the wood because Occasionally, if you go straight in with the screw, I think then what you can do is you can split the wood. Whereas if you actually pop in the bradle first to create that initial hole, then it, the screw will find its way much easier into the wood. I believe that's why we use the bradle. Afterwards, once we've got everything on, then we want a little bit of card and a little bit of uh, regular tape so that we can actually label our painting. It's important to label your painting. All right, so let's get cracking. Okay, so we've got our painting. Our painting's ready to go, it's all sealed uh, and signed. Make sure you sign your painting. Very important for when you get rich and famous, people can say, oh look, oh, I've got a, whoever you are, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so first things first, what we wanna do is we want to protect our, our canvas. We wanna protect all those staples. We just wanna cover them up and make sure that we've got a smoother, a smoother finish. So really simply, I'm going to start with my framing tape and I'm going to take my framing tape and I'm going to cover all of those staples. So what I'm doing is I'm going to try and cover up as much of this canvas as I can. So I'm just going to go across like this and then flatten down. And then get my scissors. Did I say you need scissors? Probably not. You need scissors, guys. Scissors. Okay, one side. Okay, and then we're gonna swizzle it round. Same again here. I'm going to sort out these flappy edges afterwards. Right now, I just want to get the tape on. So I've covered up all of those staples. Now we can just press down on all of those edges, make sure that it all sort of firmly down. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut into, just going to cut into those corners. Just a little bit. And then what we can do is bend down that tape. Makes for a much smoother edge. Nice and tight. Goes down nice and flat. Lovely jubbly. I'm fairly new at this. I'm sure there'll be old hands at doing this framing malarkey who'll say there's a better way. Please post in the comments if there are better ways. But this is the way that I found so far that works. So I'm going for it. Beautiful. And then the last one. Gorgeous. So that's it, simple. So now your all your staples are covered. No chance that they're gonna become a problem. It's nice and tidy. Beautiful. Step one, done. Okay, step two. Let's get these D rings on. Let's get them on. Okay. So I like the fact that these D rings are actually um, on a right angle and they're on a right angle, I'm presuming so, that they can stay down like this. And what it will mean is that when you've got your cord on, it means that your canvas is likely to stay more flush to the wall. Um, but we'll have a look at that later on. First of all, we're going to get them on. So in terms of positioning for your D-rings, you don't have to use a ruler by any means. I think the general rule is you're going to put your D-rings kind of one third down from the top of your canvas. Well, firstly, before you put your D-rings on, <laughs> don't do what I've done. It's stick your D-rings on and then realise that your painting is the wrong way around. And it's actually like that because that's really annoying. So just do double check that you've got your painting the right way around. Yeah, nothing more annoying than spending an hour getting it right and realising it's not right at all. So my painting is 25 centimetres deep. So if I could count and I knew what a third was, that would be great, wouldn't it? I'm going to say, you can just do it by eye, but I'm going to say, uh, let's go for eight centimetres down. So I'm going to measure from the top. I can't actually measure directly over because the camera's in the way. So I'm just going to guesstimate it as much as I can. Right, eight. And you just get, get your pencil, just make a little mark, third of the way down. And on this side too. Eight. Just make it nice and strong so you can see it, otherwise there's nothing worse than measuring it and then you can't even see the mark that you've made. That's quite interesting, that's quite annoying. Okay, and then when you've got that mark, you can take your braddle if you have it. If you haven't, I'm sure you could just you just go straight for your screws but seeing as I've got it I'm just going to do it and I'm just going to push in I'm just making that initial indentation into the wood just to start me off and then I'm going to get one of my d-rings one of my screws now this screw I kind of like the shorter ones because I don't want the screws to be too long. But uh, you can get all sorts of, and again, I'll put the, the links below, but this screw, I mean, it's like about five, it's about one centimetre, this screw. But they all vary, don't, want, don't worry too much. So I know that it's going, it's going into that hole, but oh look, already I've been a bit silly because I did the braddle before putting the, the doodah there, before putting the deer in there. So actually I'm gonna braddle again. I'm going to braddle again because my D-ring won't quite reach that braddle mark that I made. So there you go. Learning on the job is what it's all about, isn't it? Hey. And again here. Will it reach? No, not quite. So put your D-ring down first. You're learning every day. I'm learning every single day. <laughs> so much fun. Who doesn't love to be a carpenter? Because mm, that's what I feel like. Doing this, these shenanigans. 
Right, so then you <laughs> take your screw, pop it in your D-ring, and you should be able to just pop it in there with your hand, and then you can get your, your screwdriver and screw that in. And it'll get harder and harder as you go down. Make sure it goes right down, nice and solid. Done. And then the same with the other side. Fabulous. Just gonna lift it up a little bit because it'll make it easier to get the um to get the the cord in there. I'm just gonna undo that a little bit so I can straighten it. There we go. Beautiful. Step number two done. Alright, so <laughs> We need our cord. So for the cord, what I tend to do is I do two lengths. So I'll go, I'll have enough cord here and then I'll just have enough again to go back around. So I have like about that much. So this and that again, and I'm just going to cut it. Now this is how I, <laughs> there's lots of knots. People probably really know that's not the right way. This is how I do it, okay? This is how I do it. So I'm gonna do a close up here so you can see. And in fact, I'll pull this out to make it easier. So we're gonna make a knot on either side. This is how we do it. We're gonna go over and through. So we're going over, through and down. And then we take that end and we're gonna go over the long length. So we've gone over and then we're going to pull it around so we've got a little bit to play with and then we go under we're taking the end and we're going underneath the d-ring and up through got that so far and then we're going to pull that knot through and then we go up through this hole here so we're going underneath that bend we're going to come through here and then you should end up with two lovely circles like this and then as you pull and get tighter that circles are going to get tighter and tighter until you have your knot and that is your first that's your first knot so when you've got that then what you can do is you can turn around it's easier just to turn it around and do it from the same angle on this side so you know you've already got your knot here so then you're going to do the same on this side. So I'm just going to move this up so you can see in close up. So we're going to do exactly the same again. I'm just going to pull this out so you can see it a little bit more clearly. In fact, I'm going to push that other one down now. Okay. So we go over the top. And we're going to pull that tight now. Is that oh, stop fiddling. Stop fiddling. Right, so this one is tight and you're going to pull this tight. Again, excuse the uh, grubby nails. So we've gone over the top of the D-ring, down and through. We're going to come over the top of this now taut cord. We're going to go back underneath. And you're holding the tension on this all the time because you want to keep the tension on that. You bring that cord through you want to go oh, through that hop, through that gap there, and as you pull that through, you'll see these two circles again. Keep that tension on your left side here, and then as you pull, you can all get tighter and tighter, tighter and tighter, 
until you've done it. And then you've got your two knots. Yeah, so it should look like that. And then all we need to do now is we can take the edges off because you only need sort of under half of this length. You don't need all of it. So let's just trim that. And I might trim that a little bit. Okay, beautiful, nearly there. So next, what we want to do is we want to, we need to secure this. This isn't secure enough as it is. So I'm just going to push those D-ring down a little bit to create a little bit more tension, which is beautiful. Now, what we want to do is, I'll show you on the one that I've done. So on the back of this one, what I've done is I've actually taken that excess cord that we've got here and I've wrapped it around this main line of cord and then I've sealed it with some more of the framers tape and then when you've done that I've added a little bit of uh, the glue what's the glue called oh this one's loctite but it's the same super glue I've put a little bit of glue there and I've put a little bit of glue there and then it makes it nice and strong so that's what we're going to do now so let's get a little bit of tape ready just a little bit a little bit like that just put that there so I'm going to now take this excess cord and I'm wrapping it tightly round like this. And then when it's round, I'm taking this tape and wrapping it round, squeezing it round really tightly. giving it a squeeze lovely and then same for the other side right wrap around now do it. beautiful and then if you have a lot of cord sticking out the edge, you can just trim it a little bit. I like to have a little bit sticking out because once you've got your tape on, then what I like to do is just use a little bit of super glue for the edges of that frayed cord because what we don't want to do is over time that frayed cord to become more frayed uh, and then it could put this hanging system at risk. So we're gonna use a little bit of glue. So what I do is just put a couple of bits of card just underneath, just to protect the canvas and pop on, pop on, a couple of drops of glue on there, on there. Not to stop it fraying. That's it. And that's only going to take like about half an hour to set. And then once it's set, we're ready to label. Okay, brilliant. So your hanging kit should now be ready to go. You can have this, it's fine to have a little bit of give on it. That's normal. If you've got too much, then it's not so great. So if you can have it with some slight tension there, then that's fantastic. That's really, really good. Just make sure that you haven't got any, any nasty hard edges sticking out, which could damage a wall. Um, and then you are good to label. So let's get labeling. So my painting, so what I do for any exhibition that you're doing, it's always worthwhile having your, uh, your own label on it to start with even though the exhibition requirements might be different, they might have their own labels, but it's always good to label it so that you can actually keep track of what you've got, sizes, prices, everything like that. So at the top, you can put your name. And then the title of your work. 
And if you don't know what to title your work, if you haven't got that far, then you can always Google how how to name a, a painting. There's loads of uh, good advice on Google about how to how to successfully label your painting. What am I labeling my painting? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my lordy. It's good to have the um, type. And the size. Actually, this is 25. 25 centimeters by three centimeters and then the price. I haven't worked out the price yet. Um, so I'll do that afterwards. And then because this is just gonna be a temporary, a temporary label, there might be better ways to do this bit, but for me, I do let's just get a little bit of masking tape roll it over, stick that on the back and then either put it to the frame here or actually put it to the inside. Depends how strong your tape is that you're using. But that is it. So that is how, and that's exactly how I've done this one. So there you go. Once you've got your cord on, You've used your super glue or yeah, if you haven't got super glue, then you can use a little flame just to sear those edges. Not too much. Don't set your house on fire or anything, but just to seal those frayed edges, just to make sure that they're nice and secure. And then your painting is ready to go on the wall.